And since we didn't have nothing to do with it, we might as well rejoice and be glad in it. So let's give the Lord a round of applause as we get this day started. Amen. We're going to ask Brother Avery, Pastor Avery, I'm sorry, to come and open us up with um, our consecration of prayer. All those that can, well, if you can rest on your feet as we go before the Lord and we honor him. Amen. And we're going to go before the Lord. Amen. To invoke his service. Amen. How many came expecting to hear something from the Lord? Amen. Amen. So we're going to go before Father God in the name of Jesus, Lord. We come together, Father, in the spirit of unity and the power of agreement, Lord. We came, O oh God, Lord, where the word is declared, where there are two or three are gathered together in your name. You said you will be in the midst. So, Father, we thank you that as we gather, you are here, Father. We thank you, Father, that we acknowledge your presence, O oh God. So we're going to enter into your gates with thanksgiving, Father, and we're going to enter into your courts with praise, O oh God. Spirit of the living God, arrest this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Charge it for your glory, O oh God. Whatever we came in with, oh God, Lord, empty us out, oh God. We, want, we don't want room for anything else in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, as you're sweeping by, sweep through every row, oh God. Sweep through every seat, oh God. Touch every heart, oh God, Lord. Break every shackle, oh God, Lord. Lift every burden, oh God, Lord. Encourage every heart in the name of Jesus. That we will be challenged and changed, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And this service orchestrated for your glory, oh God. Be in every prayer, oh God. Every song that's sung, every scripture, every testimony, oh God. Even the preached word, oh God. Let the glory fall, oh God. For we create an atmosphere big enough for you to dwell in, oh God. We create an atmosphere that's bigger than what we came in. We create an atmosphere for you to dwell in. And we thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. And we put a praise in advance in our expectation for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I see you, brother. Amen. Yes. Oh, okay. We're going to now have a devotion by our deaconesses. Deaconesses. Good morning, good morning. This morning we had a good Sunday school. We talked about riding the wave. The pastor said something that really struck this morning. Are you doing it or doing the will? So this morning we're going to sing a little old hymn. Let it be real. Let it be real. Let it be real. Let it be real. Let everything you do for the master, let it be real, oh, let it be real, let it be real, let it be real, oh, let it be real, let everything you do for the master, let it be real, when you see. without quarreling over disputable matters. One, one person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. 
The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. For God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To own the, to their own master. Servants stand or fall. Mm. And they stand <coughs> and they will stand for the Lord is able to make them stand. Amen. Amen. Eternally, Father, we come to you right now, Lord, just to say thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for this day. We thank you, God, for this hour, oh God. We thank you for this second. For this day, oh God, wasn't promised to us, oh God. Lord, we ask you, oh God, forgive us right now for any sins that we committed, no and no. Father God, we ask, oh God, that you just come into this service, oh God. Have your way, oh God. We expect, oh God, a move, oh God, oh God. We just call on your name right now, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. For there's power in that name, Jesus. Broken marriages, Jesus. Wayward children, Jesus, oh God. Father God, we ask you to touch our minds this morning, oh God. Have us focus on you, oh God, and focus on you alone, oh God. Father God, we bind up any distractions, oh God, that would cause us to be hindered, oh God, to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. But God, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. Father God, we just magnify your name in this place, oh God. We just give you glory in this place, oh God. But you didn't have to do it, oh God. But Father God, we just thank you right now. We ask, oh God, that you just stir up the gifts in us, oh God. Oh God. Stir up in this place, oh God. Let that service be usual as before, oh God. But Father God, we pray for deliverance, oh God. We pray for healing, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you just touch us right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Whatever we're going through, oh God, that you just open the floodgates of heaven, oh God. Pour up from oh God, blessings we don't have room enough to receive, oh God. Father, we come humbly to you, oh God, right now, in the name of Jesus. Just to say thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God, oh God. We just ask you just to have your way in this place, oh God. We just thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. If we had 10,000 tongues, oh God, we couldn't thank you enough. But you didn't have to do it, oh God. You didn't have to save us, oh God. You didn't have to love us, oh God. But we just thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the cross, oh God. We thank you for the blood, oh God. And Father God, as we prepare to go further in the service, Father God, we just have to just touch the praise team, oh God, this morning. Touch the man of the hour, oh God. Continue to bless Mount Zion, oh God. Continue to bless the mothers. The first family, oh God, we ask, oh God, that you just have your way right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just receive this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There's a lily that's in the valley. And it's bright as the morning star. Yeah, there's a lily in the valley. Hey, it's bright as the morning star. Yeah, hey, there's a lily that's in the valley.
God. Woo! Okay. Okay. We're going to turn it over to this praise team. And let them light it up. Oh, come on and clap your hands this morning. Glory to God. He's a lily in a valley. Glory to God. How many know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think? So how many know that he is able? Glory to God. And if you know the song, help us sing it this morning. Hallelujah. Promise. 
Wherefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Welcome to my Zion, where you will love here or what? Be here. And ain't nobody gonna run you off. Amen. Every Thursday night at 7 p.m., amen, is our powerful Bible study, amen. We got this series that is coming up, it's tithing more than money. It's not about giving, it is about what, Mount Zion? Value. Value. So I'm excited about tithing more than money. Amen. Every first Sunday is our communion Sunday. Every second Sunday is our women's Sunday. Women's living here this morning. <laughs> and every third Sunday is our men of Abraham. No, they only coming up because they two of their men use the microphone in the background. I was talking about it. It wasn't on. I'ma just say go Patriots. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. I go Saints. I go say Saints. You look like you'll go any team. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chief. So all right, let me bring us all back. <laughs> have fun in the name of the Lord. Amen. Come on and give yourself a hand clap. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. All right, I have a few announcements, special announcements. Amen. Our first one is for our very own Pastor Stanley Murray. Amen. This is a Florida Crime Prevention Association. It says, congratulations. Your agency has been selected as the Florida Crime Prevention Association 2022. Woo -woo. Amen. It says Lifetime Achievement Award for our very own Pastor Sam Word. It says the award ceremony will be taking place at Hutchinson Island Marriott in Stewart, Florida on Thursday, October the 20th. Amen. It says the social hour begins at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The awards banquet is from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. The award ceremony is a business attire or uniform. Amen. Amen. All right. So now we also have a special one for our very own First Lady Tamika Murray. Yes. It says Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporate, Incorporated Epsilon Epsilon Zeta Chapter presents Final Womanhood Award to Tamika Murray. Glory to God. I'm very own. Oh, let's give it up for our first lady and Pastor Murray. All right, holy man coming up October the 29th. Pastor James C. Monroe, December the 8th is Pastor Frank Murphy, and closing it out is our very own overseer, Pastor Stanley Murray. <laughs> Amen. Is there any visitors today? If so, please stand so we can acknowledge you this morning. Oh, come on, Mazan, you know what we do. Listen, listen. So we do something at our church. We sing to y'all. Amen. So now Zion. One, two, three. How have you been doing? Come on. It says, welcome to the service of the Lord. 
and welcome to Mount Zion. Welcome to Zion. Come on, Zion. It's good to see you. Come on. It says, how have you been doing? How have you been doing? Welcome to the service. And welcome to Mount Zion. Oh, Zion, y'all know what we do on the third time. It's good to see you. Rock with it. How have you been doing? Welcome to the circle. And welcome to Mount Zion. Come on, welcome to the service of the Lord. Welcome to Mount Zion. Come on, welcome to the service of the Lord. And welcome to Mount Zion. Come on, Zion, last time. Welcome to the service. And welcome to Mount Zion. Listen, listen. On behalf of our senior pastor, overseer Stanley Murray, and our beautiful first lady, Tamika Murray, we want to say welcome to Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. Where you love here, it ain't nobody but one y'all. God bless you. Clergy Appreciation Month. Pastor Appreciation Month. My God. I hear no way to tell me. You say that to me. So I wanted to identify clergy and acknowledge how helpful they have been over the years uh, and how helpful they are today. So First day, you'll come up. Where she go? Yeah, hold that. What other one? We're going to ask the Minister Mumford to come up, Diana. <laughs> Not only is she one of our best, but she's also our sorority sister, so. We want to let how much we love you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Mr. Shaw. Thank you for all that you do. Mr. Shaw is also one of our founding members, 11 years strong. Put your hands together for him. Also, a youth pastor as well. We thank God we love you, man. <laughs> now, some of you may wonder, uh, Pastor Avery Herring, if you'll come. <laughs> pastor Herring is a formal pastor currently getting ready for some things in the future. But he was humble enough to say, hey, Pastor. I need to be somewhere. And I 
came to be under a good covering until God would send me out to do the task that God is going to send him to do. And what better place than Mount Zion to So we want to acknowledge how much we love you and how much you mean to us while you're here. Amen. And all that you do. Amen. Put your hands together for our clergy today. God bless you. Huh? Oh, yes. Look at that. You see a FedEx envelope? Amen. Should be a FedEx envelope in there. So, if you guys don't mind, come back down for a minute, you guys. Uh, Pastor Avery, you get to watch this one. Your time will come. <laughs> It's a white in FedEx envelope teacher, man. <laughs> Amen. So, y'all can come right here. So these leaders went through a seven-week ministerial class. They had essays. Come on, Diana. Come on back up. <laughs> and they had a final exam. And uh, I'm going to give them they got an opportunity to talk about it last year, but we did not give them their certificates of graduation. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got a sign. Give me a minute, let me sign right quick. Let me make it official. You know, I got this signature when I was in the military. Somebody stole my income tax check while I was gone. We won't go there. Somebody married my mama, but ain't the point. So I created my signature that cannot be copied except the Legally, somebody else knows how to do this. But this is our certificate of completion, of completion that says clergy enhancement course. This certificate is awarded to Minister Diana Mumford. <laughs> Minister Geraldine Shaw. <laughs> Pastor Marvin All. <laughs> Pastor Reggie Palmer. We'll get a picture now, somebody. Y'all come here, turn around. We'll get on each side and uh, you come in the middle here, you and I. And, uh, So, if y'all did not know, earlier this week was Deacon Sidney Mumford's birthday. Come on, Deacon. Come on, come on, come on. Diana gets to celebrate her husband. You know, we do that here. Come on, celebrate your husband. He already teared up. Already, Deacon? Give him a minute. Praise God. To my husband, the love of my life. The man that God sent me, the man that covers me from thick and thin, I love you and want to wish you a happy, happy birthday. God bless you. Now put yourself a big and for today, amen? God bless it all. Amen. 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 Amen.
So, I got some great things I got to get ahead of here. So, we have created um, our Building on the Mount initiative. I can go as far as to say there is a beautiful place waiting for us. Amen? I can officially say that. So, we have opened up another bank account strictly for this initiative. Now, let me help you with this. At first, I was just going to let the envelopes go out, but I'm not going to be buying envelopes for y'all to put one dollar in. Can I be transparent while I talk? So here's the goal. If you desire to be a giver to our building initiative, then I need you to take an envelope, either put what you're going to put for the month, or hold it for the month, and bring it all in together. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Am I, am I, anybody not quite sure how I put that out? If you can do what you're going to do for the month, go ahead and put it in today. If you need three more weeks, to make it right, whatever your pledge is going to be. Now, it says here $10, $25, $50, $100, $100, or other. So let's be real. Come on, Reverend. Yes, your $10 is helpful. But when you need a couple million dollars, <laughs> amen. Amen. Now, this is not your tight envelope. This is for building on the mount. But for those who are going to do both today, when we get ready for offering, I want you to stand when the time comes. I want you to hold both envelopes. And I'm going to guide you through something that we're going to start claiming. Amen. All I can tell you is this much. Where we're going is a whole lot bigger than where we are. Amen? Somebody should have stood up and clapped for that, but that's okay. If you want greater, look at your neighbor and say, Don't you want greater? Amen. Amen. Now, this second envelope, I'm not going to get too deep in the weeds because it's about me. You know, I ain't big about me. So they created a Pastor Murray love offering envelope. My wife did that behind my back. Um, I would say again, if you plan to do a certain amount for the month, hang on to it. Just bring it in for the month. Um, rather than four envelopes of $2 or whatever it is. Does that make sense? Because the envelopes cost money, and I don't want to waste money. And I love your $8. <laughs> If they're going to talk about you, you're absolutely correct. But whatever God has told you to do, just take the one envelope. If you desire either one of these envelopes, my ushers will take, will bring them to you. Amen. You can put your name in. Uh, you can save your name. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, oh, here. That's the pastors. All right. Now, Becky, you're in charge of this. One envelope, not ten to one person. Amen? Unless you're putting ten checks in them. Amen? Amen. So we thank God for what he's doing. Did it, was that kosher? Did that go over well, Mother? I did that right. That was decent in order, right? Amen. Went over well. Thank you, Mama. Amen. The mother's boy nodded. I'm in good place. All right? Amen. Amen. So who's excited about giving today? Come on now, we got greater coming. Amen. I wonder how y'all gonna feel with all that space. <laughs> Amen. God is doing something really, really great. And we need your help to do so. Amen. So, um, I might have no trouble don't last always. Huh? Amen. If you have 
at Trinity Payment. You can go to the back and see Sister Tisha. Amen. We also have a QR code on the screen. You can scan it with y'all techies. can scan it and give to the mount. Amen. Amen. And next week we'll have everything for building on the mount electronically will be by Givelify only. Givelify only. That goes to that direct account only. Amen. Amen. for this glorious day, oh God. Father, we thank you right now for your offering, oh Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you right now for touching the hearts of many, oh Heavenly Father, Lord, to give with an overabundancy right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we thank and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Now we're going to have our scripture reading for today by... Pastor Reggie Palmer. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning 
We'll be coming from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 11, uh -huh. starting at the 23rd verse. Again, our scripture reading for this morning will be coming from 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. If you will please stand, starting at verse number 23. When you get it, can you say amen? Amen. If you need a few moments, say hold on. Again. Our scripture reading this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse number 23. And it reads as such, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take Eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat and drink this bread... This cup ye show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his most holy word. Amen. 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 Well, my brothers and sisters, all we've done this far was unto the Lord. Yes. Now the Lord has something for us. Yes. A word from heaven. And we just so happen to have a brother here, yeah. our very own Pastor Stanley Murray, who's going to tell us what the Lord said, yeah. and we got to do it accordingly. Amen? Yeah. So stretch your hands the way you will stand. Say, Pastor Murray, preach the word. Pastor Murray, preach the word. Pastor Murray, hey. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about God today. I know He got something greater over my life. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down, come on. Yes, sir.
Jesus this morning. You can do a little better than that. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for me. Y'all don't want to. I'm going to get y'all out of here. Somebody must got a one o'clock game. That's all right. I'm going to get y'all out of here. I'm excited about who God is. Grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 41. And I want to start with the 8th verse. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41, the 8th verse. As you find it, feel free to rest on your feet for the reading of the word of God. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41, starting with verse 8. Amen. You have to say amen? Amen. If you need a moment, say so. Feel free to use the table of contents. Amen. You paid for that whole Bible. Amen. He says, but thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, thou art my servant. I have chosen thee. Look at the neighbor and say, and not Cast, cast thee, thee away. away. Our pilot text which comes from verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You may be seated this morning. Giving honor to our God, to his son that died on Calvary's cross, to our comforter yet still, the Holy Spirit. To all of our guests thus far, we pray you have enjoyed the spirit of the Lord and all that he brings. Amen. To the best church, my side of heaven. To the water in my water hole. Put your hands together, my first lady. To me. I ain't got nothing left. <laughs> Amen. And all of a glory. This was an exciting book. If you have not had the chance to read the book of Isaiah, uh, it is a very profound book, Isaiah being one of the major prophets who made it known how important it was to know of the coming of the Messiah. Uh, the majority of his writings talks about the Messiah, uh, refers back to Jesus' announcement to the world. The prophet Isaiah he spent a lot of time in the smaller kingdom of Judah, which is the capital of Jerusalem, also called Zion. Yeah. Help us today. He wrote mostly about the coming of Jesus, and he talked about the sufferings and the sacrifice that Christ was going to make when he came. And I want to encourage somebody today, God has led us this particular text because sometimes, we feel like that we're going through so much that we are alone. Come on, Pastor. Yes, we have people around us. We have family with us. We have folk who are in and out of our lives periodically. But yet, we can be in a room full of people and still feel lonely. Yes, sir. Isaiah dealt a lot with 
the situations of various kings, the Assyrians. He dealt with the pharaohs, people of oppression upon his people. And I don't know if I've ever seen more today than ever before how being a Christian has now become null and void, if you will. If you know God, it, they want you to expect to be able to put up with what you can't do as a Christian, but what I can do without knowing God. It's almost like it's scary to even say that I pronounce the Lord to myself because I don't want the rebuttal that comes with it. But everything else I want to be, everything else I want to do, it's now become accepted and in some cases made law. No matter how distant it has become from the Bible. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I want to leave you with something really profound that God has shared with me. The text says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Father God, let the word that we spread today be done by decency and in order. Yes, Lord, if there's one who has not heard your word today, may he or she be convicted to unite with you. Father God, for those of us who know your word, backslidden in our ways, we come now in a spirit of repentance to reunite with you. You are the true part of made us, yet still your true clay. Shape us, make us, and mold us in what you have us to be. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, I had a way to encourage you today. Quickly, we'll be strong. We won't be long. Look at your name and will and say, Pastor's going to preach you out. I won't let you fall. One of the most scariest times as children, as young babies, is the stage from crawling to walking. When they were learning to crawl on the floor, they weren't so concerned about falling because they were as close as you could get to the ground. And when you look at that from a spiritual nature, when we came in learning how God was to us, we were about as close as you could get to the foundation of God. We believed in what was being preached. We believed in what was being teached. We had a zeal, though we might not have had, we had a lack of knowledge. We leaned on what was told to us. We leaned on what was preached and teached to us. We had a desire and a hunger to be around it, to be with it, to share it, to care for it. But somewhere along the way, them terrible twos showed up. Well. And I began to learn two songs and three scriptures. And before you know it, I figured I knew the Bible all about me for myself. Wow. I didn't pray as much as I used to, minister. I didn't, I, I didn't worship like I used to, mother. I didn't, I, 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 didn't, I didn't stay in tune with those who held me accountable, responsible, and reliable for what I said I heard God say to me. Wow. Then COVID showed up and what it really did is showed us who really been praying. Yeah. Yes, sir. It showed us who really had a foundation for the walk. It separates those from who were attending and those who were assembling in church. Because I come to tell you every week, if you're coming to a house of worship, don't come without a purpose. And if that purpose means you just want to learn more about God, come with that desire to learn more about God. Because the more you learn about God, the more you understand that your destination doesn't make your destiny. Yes. That you get to a point somewhere, you learn a few things, but you know God wants greater out of you. It's going to move you to somewhere else. So don't get so caught up in how you're standing or whether you're standing, kneeling, crawling, or walking. But understand that whatever position that I'm in, I must do it in the spirit of excellence. Because thus says the Lord. He 
said, fear thou not, for I am with you. Now, what do I need to not let you fall? I'm glad you asked, Mother Porter. Thank you for raising your hand. I'm going to help these young people. I'm gonna, me and you, we're going to help them right quick. We're going to help them. He said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I won't let you fall. fall. I remember when I first learned how to swim. You know, I used to put you on the side of the pool. We didn't have no baby classes back then. Not in my neighborhood, maybe where y'all rich folk live. We didn't have, the lifeguard might have been watching if he showed up at all, right? And I remember standing on the pool and all my friends had already learned how to swim. And so they were playing in the pool and they were moving back and forth and they were doing what they were doing. And, 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 and I wanted to do what they were doing on the deeper side of the pool, but I knew better. But I still didn't mean I didn't have a desire to, to, God, I catch it, to do what they were doing because I saw the benefit of them being able to do what they were doing, but I didn't understand the price that it took to get there. And sometimes in our lives, we watch what other people got going and how other people are having things and doing things. And we want to get over to that side, not realizing it don't just take a lot to get there. It takes a lot to stay there. Yes, My supernatural connection enforces that I must now understand that I must not be in fear of my love of God. And sometimes, Lady Palmer, Lady Alls, I, you know, you, you, you can get into this thing and, and you get into territory you're not familiar with. You, you, you start getting into areas you're not comfortable with. And that's why I always encourage everyone who's a part of this ministry. I want y'all to quit confining yourself to a certain neighborhood, to a certain culture, to a certain area. Learn to get out of your areas that you're in so that God can use you for a greater purpose. Okay, Washington Shore is the only place that cook fish. Oh, good fish now. Hold on now, let me help you. I didn't say it wasn't good fish. But there are other areas out there that you can learn certain things just being in the room. It ain't really about the food as much as it is about the focus of the room God put you in. And he said, I prepare you at a table in a place of your own enemies that you can even learn from the people that don't care nothing about you. They don't know they're feeding you the whole time everything God has put you in place for and qualifies you with. Yes, somebody, sir. Yep, somebody, sir. But we sometimes we are afraid to learn more. Because you can't learn more and not be responsible for it. You're helping me, sir. If you want to do greater, then you have to be responsible for the greater you accept. Amen. Why do I want a house and I won't even keep my apartment clean? <laughs> I'm four months behind on that. But I'm praying for greater. And it's not that I can't financially sustain it. It's I'm just bad with money. Can we be transparent this morning? So what I need to do is when pastor say, look, come on down here, let me show you how to get your stuff in order so God can use you for greater, then you ought to say, let me get down here and see, because in these Bible studies, we talk about how to get not just your life together, how to get your credit together, how to get your insurance right, how to get your meetings right, how to have your kids in line, how to understand what this is and that is, how this is changing in the world and how you should adjust. Am I by myself? Because the world's not going to stop rotating for us simply because we can't keep up. That's right, that's right. He says, I won't let you fall. He says, fear not, for I am with you. First of all, I won't let you fall. He says, I will hold you. I will hold you. And one thing about a crying baby. <laughs> One 
other thing about a crying baby was when you grab them and pull them real close. And they can feel your heart beat next to theirs. They begin to realize the necessary area of their life is being comforted. But somewhere along the line, I don't know where we got, Grandma said, we got the smell in ourselves. We didn't want to hear from God like God wanted us to hear from him. We didn't want to be in present for him to pull us up close. And we started doing some of our own things and saying some of our own stuff. But then every now and then we want to run back in the yard, but we didn't want to come in the house. And I stopped by to tell you the Lord and said, if you want to be where I am, then come where I am so I can meet you there and get you to a new level that I can use you for my work, use you for my will, and use you for my way. But what you got to do is you're going to have to give up Pookie and Ray Ray and Boquisha and all of other ones who've been holding you down all this long, draining you out of everything you got, pulling you out of everything that you got going, you're going to have to now stand up for yourself and say, I want greater. And I ain't scared to say it this time. You know what? Isn't it ironic when people have done, done something for you? They want to hold over your head. Don't remember when, people. Uh. When you was in a tight. But what they didn't realize was, yes, God was helping you, but he was helping them too. They just didn't see it that way. What am I saying? Sometimes God is helping you why you helping somebody else? But it don't feel that way. <laughs> but I come to encourage that God's still using you. And you got to understand that he won't let you fall in what something you have said or done to help somebody. And regardless of whether they accept it or not in the right way, it's not your person to worry about. We had five weeks we talked about um, uh, talking about forgiveness, the road less trouble. And I want to encourage somebody today that somebody today is saying, if I can just get over what they did to me when I was 12 or when I was 16 or when I was 22, I know that I can move into something greater. I come and tell you the devil is a liar. You can do it right now today because what they did ain't fair to what God's going to do. And we come close. I will hold you if you let me. Uh-huh. Every now and then you baby get all out inside they sell. You go to hold them and they go, hey, and they go to run it off. Hmm? You ever been in the store when you got a child and decide to splat down on the floor and show up? You ever been across the room and your mama look at you and she talk through her teeth? You get home and And you can understand what's crazy, you can understand every word she said. You just feel it in your spirit. got that same sense of humor. He says, I chastise those that I love. And I'm glad that God has no problem grabbing Stanley Murray by the back of his pants, taking him in a quiet room and doing what he got to do to get me back on track. I'm not running from that anymore. I did it back in the day, but now today, whatever God wants to discipline me about, I am standing in line saying, when is my turn, Lord? Because I know you're setting me up for something greater and you're getting my mind right that I can focus on it and not look at you and run away from it. Do I got in the blood watch believers that are least say, I'd rather have the discipline of God than the distance from God. Shoot, weapons is part of worship. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it ain't a crying out for you. Because <laughs> I always tell people when it, it, what, what really is going to hurt is when your mama or your daddy quit putting their hands on you. Just go in the room and close the door. You better be careful, children. Because that means there's a giving up coming on. And you don't want that. You don't want your parents saying, you know what? We have 
a responsibility to just like parents acknowledge the children, children you should acknowledge back to your parents. The gratefulness of what they do for you. Because when the Bible says if you honor, it didn't say obey. Why doesn't it say obey? I don't know why I'm going here, but we're going to go there anyway. Because you can obey and still be grudging about what you did. You can still do what your mom or your daddy told you and still have a hard heart while you're doing it. So he says, honor. Honor says that I will clean up how I feel about it. Realize my mama, daddy, grandma, auntie, uncle, Lulu, the little bob, be we, be we, and brother D. They did it all for me and I want to do what they told me because I want to make sure that I honor them in spirit and in truth so that my days will last longer while I'm on this earth. Now, I'm about to encourage somebody that the same thing applied to us grown folk that are children of the Lord. When God wants something for you to do, don't you get all upset and mad about it. Say, Lord, if it's my last $10, I don't give it up. If it's my last little take of gas, I drive where they gotta go. If it's the last sheet off my bed, I let them have it. Because I know whatever that I have lost, you're gonna give me hundredfold, thousandfold, or whatever. Is there anybody this morning that can at least say, I won't let you fall? Because I won't pray. So, be not dismayed, for I am that God. He says that now I will not hurt you. I will not hurt you. And sometimes we get confused about what we're going through, and we get scared, and we don't know who our friends are, who our enemies are. Sometimes we take our enemies as friends and take our friends as enemies. And sometimes we're not confused. When I always say, if we're without information, we use what? Imagination. All day long. Yeah. 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 But here's what I love about God. He has a unique ability if you listen yes. for everything you need to come in your path. God. Yeah. The issue is my situation is bigger than my salvation and I miss it when it come by. Wow. Jesus. Helping us today, Reverend. He says, yea, though I walk through the shadow, that shadow causes you for a moment yes, yes. not to see what's alive. Wow. And before you know it, the shadow ain't moving, you are. Wow. And you say, why can't I get out this fog? Because you keep moving with the cloud. And maybe just, maybe you just got to stop for a second. Get on your knees and say, Lord, I can't go no further. You're going to have to carry me. You're going to have to take me to that next level because I can't get there on my own. I don't got the strength. I don't got the faith. I don't got, I need your love now upon me, your peace upon my mind. Because if I keep doing the way I'm going to do it, I won't make it through the rest. Of, am I talking to myself today? I'm not going to make it through the rest of the day. I got to get before you so you can start encouraging me, building me up, setting me up. And God, I need you to send somebody by who knows you like you know you and going to remind me that I need to know you like you. You know you and together we can do greater things. Look at the name say, I'll hold you. And I won't hurt you. So then he says, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea. Why is he using yes? He could have just said, I will strengthen thee, I will help thee. Because yes is meant for the doubt part. Whenever we're giving something, that still leaves room for doubt. So he adds the yea to confirm what he has just revealed. He reveals saying, I will strengthen thee. He uses yea to confirm yes. Is he talking to me? Yes. Even though I don't come to church all the time? Yes. Even though I'm shacking up with this man? Yes. Or oh, this one man? Yes. Even though I'm off track at school and not studying because I'm too busy trying to be where they want me to be in school? Yes. All that. Help somebody. But everything's got a season. Uh-huh. 
See, grace is a season to get it together. It's not an opportunity for you to hang out and do what you want to do and then think I'm going to be there to clean it all up for you. It is designed for you to get what you need to rehab yourself back into the game. And sometimes we forget how important it is to be in the game. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me help y'all. Can I be transparent? I know I got the microphone. I know I'm standing up here, but let me tell you something. Y'all talk to each other more. A whole lot of y'all talk to me. What are y'all telling each other? Are you holding each other accountable? Are you being honest with one another? Loving them, each other, yet not allowing you to stay distant from God. Because any true Christian cannot allow you to stay there. I know we good friends. I know we go back. I know we was high school cheerleader buddies and football fans and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, we in this together. And that would be two doors from hell. If I did anything different than what I'm doing. Our goal is to get there. Now we can get there together. We can get there in other ways of trying to get there of how you think. But that don't make it right. Let's just follow what God has put in place. He already designed it. He's given us the only way we need to get there. Through our confession. And I believe that he died for us. And by that, it should cause me to do something, to say something, to believe in something, to be somewhere, to be doing something well when I do it, to say something well when I say it, to give something well when I give it. That's what it should do. I want to apologize for some preachers out there giving false doctrine to y'all. I want to give you all the benefits without the building blocks. If you want to know God, you got to know him for yourself. I ain't God. I'm just a spiritual leader trying to serve just like you're trying to serve. And come with a price when I do that. But at the end of the day, I'm just trying to help you with the direction you say God told you to go in. I just let you know you missed the exit. Amen. Okay. I like that. <laughs> that was good. So, so he says, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Now he's saying, I will help you. I won't let you fall. I will hold you. I will not hurt you. I will help you. Do we really want God's help? I know you don't mind your neighbor's help. But do you want God's help? Now let me help you. God's help come with a price. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're going to go to God for help, then you better be ready for whatever God tell you to do while you're in it. And sometimes we don't like what God tells us. And it doesn't feel good to us. So what do we do? We go right back to what works. The enemy. But they come in a bag, a bottle, skirt tail, pair of britches, whatever distracts us from really following God. Because he says, I will strengthen thee. Why would God strengthen thee? So I can help you. Because God is realizing that most of the time that when you want to do something, in the, even in the natural world, you have to have the strength to do it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you do. Better yet, can I go there? Yes. You need the strength to keep doing it. Yes. And sometimes in our walk, we, 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 we get weak about how we're doing things. We get upset about how we're handling things. We lose track on how things are flowing. And God is saying, I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help thee. You don't have to do it by yourself. And I want to encourage somebody today. Maybe you thought that because you've made some mistakes in your life, nobody is going to be there to kind of help you through it. I just want to encourage you, the devil is a liar. If you place your place in a sense of humbleness, in a place of wanting God to send you somebody, and that's what I would tell people, quit 
you know, change your prayers a little bit. I, I wake up, God, who would you have me to honor every morning I get up? Because I know he's going to bring somebody by my path who's going to want me to help them. But if I'm not praying for it, I ain't, y'all not catching me. I can't be the help I'm supposed to be, and I can't help strengthen somebody. Who are you helping? I know you've been on your job. You're the, you're the guy. You're the lady. Who are you helping? You know what the enemy tried to tell me when, 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 when they called and told me I had this Lifetime Achievement Award? And I said, okay, Lifetime? Well, that means it's over. I mean, what more could I do? And God said, well, maybe that's all I got you to do where you at. I got a new assignment for you. I got a new place I want to send you. I got a new people I want you to talk to. And I want to encourage some blood washed believers today. That's why I said, don't just get caught up in where you are right now. Be prepared for God to send you somewhere greater. Be prepared for God to put you somewhere else that he's going to set you up for his work, for his will, and for his way. So you will be able to say, I will hold you. I will not hurt you. And I will help you. And so, he says, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Look at the words he's using. I tell people when you read the scripture, every distinct word has a distinct meaning. Look what he's putting here. He's saying, strengthen, help, uphold. All those are guarantees. You don't have to go through this by yourself unless you choose to. You don't have to be where you are unless you choose to. He says, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Mm -hmm. wow. Now he's distinguishing an area okay. of strength. Because who sits at the right hand of the Father? Y'all not catching that? Now he's saying, I won't let you fall. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. I will hold you. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. I will not hurt you. Uh -huh. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will help you. That's right. But now he's saying something very important. He says, I will hold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now he's saying I will heal you. Yeah. Because whether you really or not, all of us in there have a spiritual sickness. That has caused us not to know God when we should have known God. But that's okay. He gave us time to still be to this day now that we can know him for ourselves. And now he will get, away, get rid of just having relief over something. He's going to heal you from something. And I don't know about you, but I want to be healed for whatever the stuff I have done in my past. God, you gave me. Move me forward for your work. Move me forward for your will. And move me forward for your way. Do I got in that blood watch believers today that believe that I won't let you fall? So, can I tell you that God wants to do something different today? And I want you to stand everybody for that. I want you to just close your eyes. Because we got some people, so says the Spirit, that feel like they can't stand no longer. And I come to encourage you today by saying that the Lord is seeing your eyes, your heart, and your spirit. And he just wants to come and take hold of you. Because he is a way maker, a miracle worker, promise keeper. That's who he is. Everyone that can just raise your hands for a second. Let's, let's suffer together. If you believe the Lord in the pardon of your sins, you want to accept him as your Lord and Savior right now, you may come and do so. Maybe you're saying, you know what, I know the Lord for myself, but I need a place of accountability. I need a church home. be a part of greater. Won't you come while there's still time? A 
Or maybe he's saying, you know what, I just, I'm just tired of carrying what I'm carrying. I need a break. Because I'm broken. Come and be anointed by the oil and give him the encouragement of knowing that he's not done with you while you still have time.
You never know what somebody's going through. Prayer is the key. Faith unlocks the door.
Joseph, before you leave, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. He died.